Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and this is part seven in my Gears of War armor build series. In this build video, I'm gonna be putting together Marcus's shoulder pads. And the thing I absolutely love about these is the fact that they look big and impressive, but they're extremely lightweight and they attach with parachute clips. So there's a ton of mobility going on here. Plus, they tie in perfectly with the rest of the armor. Now, just like everything else in this series, they are, of course, made all out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And I, of course, have free PDF files available over on my website that you can download in case you would like to make your own armor. So, I want to show you what it takes to put Marcus's shoulder pads together. Let's go ahead and get started. For the main body of the shoulders, I'm going to take part A and trace and cut that out of some 10 millimeter foam two times. To give it a compound curve, the dart that runs up the middle is glued together using some weld wood contact cement. To help reinforce the seam, I glue on a small strip of 2mm foam. Using my rotary tool, I give all of the edges a slight bevel. Then I can heat seal and curve it a little bit more using my heat gun. Part B is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. These are going to make up the detail strips that go in the middle. By using a hobby knife to lightly score the foam and then using my heat gun, the foam will open up. This is a fantastic way to get some really clean detail lines on the project. Part C can now be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Once cut out, these strips could be rounded over with a rotary tool and heat sealed. Now the thing to note here is that while gluing them to the shoulders, I'm rounding the base structure. This is going to help the shoulders keep that rounded shape and they won't ever go flat. Using part D, these smaller detail panels can now be traced and cut out of some 2mm foam and adhered to the shoulders. Small strips of 2mm foam are used to cover the gaps between parts B and D. Marcus's shoulders have a small buckle detail at the bottom. To simulate this, I'm going to use a parachute clip, but I'm going to cut off the top. To cover the latches, I'm also going to glue on a strip of 2mm foam. This can then be glued to the shoulder armor. Some small blocks of 4mm foam are then cut and glued to cap the top. Then some strips of 2mm foam are cut and glued to the buckle. These of course add some visual interest but further match the game. To build up the armor plating, part E is traced and cut out of some 4mm foam and then glued to the surface. On the template I've included this strap detail that's going to go on the top of the shoulder armor. It's made out of various pieces of 2, 4, and 6mm. You just need to cut all these out, round them over, and heat seal them. Now I'm of course building this as I go, I don't have a build video or template to go off of. So here I'm going back and trimming away some of part B. After this section has been removed, I can start to glue this buckle detail into place. And here you can see how some of the sections are in place of part B and some go on top. I'm going to add a texture detail to the buckle. This is going to be out of some 2mm foam. Just like part B, lines are scored into the surface and then a heat gun is used to open it up. From this I can then trace and cut out the size that I need and glue that to the buckle. Just like other parts of the armor, fake rivets are made using leather punches. And just like the chest armor, some of the rivets are protruding and sometimes I just use the leather punch directly on the foam. To cut the holes in the shoulder pads, I'm going to use a Forstner bit. My HD foam is sturdy enough that it's not going to tear it, it's going to cut pretty clean. These are going to be replicated to match the template and I'll end up having 10 holes per shoulder pad. 
Using a large punch, I create some circles out of 4mm foam. A small cut is put down the middle of each and then my heat gun is used to open that up. Each circle is then glued into the recess using some super glue. Going back to my smaller punch, I add some inset rivets to match the game. Now of course I need to texture this to match the chest armor. So once again I'm heating the foil, not the foam, and pressing that into the surface. I also took this opportunity to add a little bit of battle damage with my rotary tool. To start the painting process, I'm going to be using some Plasti Dip and Rust-Oleum Flat Antique Nickel. Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Rich Silver can then be applied to the surface using a 1 inch mop brush. Graphite powder is then applied to smooth the surface and then buff to a higher sheen. For the detail straps that run down the middle, these are painted using some Liquitex Mars Black. Then a wash of the same color is applied to the entire surface, but a lot of this is going to be removed using a damp paper towel. Going back, I'm using some more iridescent rich silver on the bottom panel. And just like the chest, even though this is all silver, there's lots of different various hues. A large mop brush is used to speckle the surface. And then a small detail brush is used along the edge to simulate edge wear and chipping. The panels at the top are slightly darker, so I mixed together some iridescent rich silver with a little bit of Mars Black. This same color is also used on all the inset circles and rivets. I made a small stencil out of cardstock from Marcus's Phoenix logo. Liquitex parchment is then applied on top of the stencil to give me a general location. With these as a reference, I can now paint in all of my detail lines without having to freehand each one. For areas that need to be cleaned up, I could go back with a detail brush and that same mixture of Mars Black and Iridescent Rich Silver. Now, just like I had done on the chest, these decals are a little too clean. So I can go in with a damp paper towel and give them a little bit of wear. A small stencil was also made for the little logos that are on the top. This is where all those hours of miniature painting and having a steady hand come into play. Using the rectangle and triangle stencils that I had made for the chest, I can add those details to the shoulder pads as well. These are going to be painted onto the surface using some Liquitex Cadmium Free Red. To attach the shoulder armor to the chest, I'm going to be using parachute clips and 1 inch nylon. This is going to allow the shoulder pads to be removable for transport, but this is also going to give a decent amount of mobility while wearing the costume. Using a combination of hot glue and super glue, one end of the parachute clip is glued into the chest. Once in place, I can then measure exactly how much of that needs to stick out to attach to the shoulder pad. The placement is marked on the underside and then glued into place. I also added a section of 2mm foam on top just as an additional support. And you can see here, when attached to the chest, it fits perfectly.
So you all can see the steps that I took to put together the shoulder armor to finish off Marcus's chest piece. Now, again, if you wanna build any of this, I have free PDF files available over on my website. Download them and build right along with the videos. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.